What is good Tesla family, it's Ray J back with another video and in this one I'm going to be talking about the one and only Tesla Stunk which you should be looking out for for the future. I'm also going to do some in-depth technical analysis and give you guys my price prediction for the market for tomorrow and talk about how this may affect Tesla going forward. I'm also going to break down why today is a big day for the markets because we have the big midterm election results coming out very soon and this will affect the future of the stock market, our economy as a whole and also big policy decisions to be made. Now before I break anything down, before I get into any more details, Details, I do have to mention a couple of things before starting. Firstly, I'm not a financial planner, so don't take any of this as financial advice whatsoever. And also, if you guys can, please smash the like button if you want to see more videos like this. Not only benefits me, it benefits the entire ape community as a whole. And the last thing is, if you guys can, please check out the Weeble link down below in the description. If you sign up for Weeble, the link down below and deposit any amount of money into the account, you're guaranteed up to 12 free stocks, each worth up to $2,000. And the best part is, any of these 12 free stocks could be a free Tesla share, a free Neo share, or a mix of all of them. It's a limited time offer. The offer ends in a week. Check it out before they run out. With that out of the way, let's get on with the video. Looking at Tesla, this thing was down almost 3% for the day. And what's very interesting is we didn't actually hold 190. We came all the way down to the next support zone around that 186 level. Now, despite the fact that this did end up happening, the market did get a big bounce. And this actually did help Tesla a bit. And Tesla actually pushed to about the 195 zone and we do have this big gap that formed today as well and this doesn't necessarily look that great in my opinion but seeing the fact that tesla managed to hold above 190 is kind of like a decent sign but overall guys it's still looking pretty bearish net because of the fact that we've been downtrending and this thing is continuing to make those new lows so if we do end up breaking below 186 we are likely going to retest the very very popular zone around 180 and that's where i think tesla is going to go very soon now if we do come to 180 historically lots of buyers like to step in around this zone if you guys look at the chart and you look at some options flow data but if we somehow break below that which is possible for like the longer term future i mean 173 followed by that like 166 level these are also possible to be tested i don't see it happening like super quickly at least i hope that doesn't happen but nonetheless guys 180 does seem very possible if tesla does continue to come down now the real question is is tesla gonna like see a big drop tomorrow and the day after the answer is it's very possible but it's going to be dependent on the market and other factors and how tesla reacts to midterms so not only is it just like midterms we have some big earnings coming out as well I think Rivian has them tomorrow. Roblox has them too. Neo has them pretty soon. Fiverr and other big companies. We also just had Disney's. I think it's happening as I'm speaking. And there is a lot of projection for their guidance to not be very strong, especially because of the fact that these rates are going to continue to be at these higher levels for longer than anticipated, just as Jerome Powell mentioned. When it comes to Tesla, though, there is something very interesting. That's the fact that the overall P.E. ratio is starting to come down a bit. And this is often what happens during times like this as the price is coming down. What else is interesting is uh, if you look at the data, Tesla has been underperforming and we are seeing a new low in the price pairs ratio. This is a very bearish signal. The fact that Tesla is just underperforming and the market was actually green again. SPY, the QQQ, the NASDAQ and uh, the IWM, the Russell 2000. These things were actually green and Tesla was red, which is once again not a very good sign. If you compare to, uh, Tesla to like the QQQ, you will notice that uh, both of them have been on a bit of a downtrend. But the QQQ is actually outperforming Tesla right now, of all things. That's not a good sign, guys. Tesla is still showing lots of weakness during this time. Now, it's very evident that the midterm elections may play a big role and the market is actually reacting to what is potentially to come. And that is likely to be a big landslide in one direction or at least one party taking over the house, the opposite party. It's very, very possible for that to happen. And as of right now, it's having a negative effect on Tesla. Is this like a really bad thing for the long term? I don't really see it that way. I see this as a very good buying opportunity. But for the short term, there could be more potential downside because so far as we are entering midterms, the market has been pumping and Tesla has had this opposite effect. So this trend may continue going into tomorrow and the days after. Now, many big banks 
They're still very bullish on Tesla, which is a good sign. We are still very bullish. And historically, on Wednesdays, Tesla's only green about 48.75% of the time. The large majority of the time, Tesla's actually red on Wednesdays, at least for this year. So once again, another very bearish signal is still perpetuating. Now, when it comes to short interest, I did notice that this did come up a bit. So we did see lots of shorts pile in, as the data showed this for yesterday. But we're still waiting on the data for like the later days to still come out. It takes a little bit of time. But as of right now, guys, there are still a lot of shorts piling in. Now, one thing I don't like about Tesla is the fact that the volume was very high. And the majority of this volume was selling pressure that caused Tesla to actually break below 190 and actually hit 186. So right now, you know, the bears are gaining control and there's a lot of the selling pressure that's making up this volume, which is once again pushing the share price down. The short volume percentage went up again, like I projected. It's currently at like 49%. It's probably going to go up a little bit more for today when the data comes out. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see like 55 to 60% again, meaning that the bears have control over the stock as of right now. Now on SPY, something very interesting happened that I mentioned in one of my earlier videos. The put to call ratio was 2.65, or at least like today it's that much. It was on like Sunday and Monday, 3.5. 72. This means that so many people got destroyed on their puts. They en ended up closing their puts red, or at least I presume it was red for them because of the fact that they were over leveraged on one side. And when this happens, they there tends to be pain on that side that's going too far on the put side. Now, this doesn't guarantee we're going to continue to be super, super bearish, but the put to call ratio is not crazy high anymore. It's only like 2.65. It's pretty high, but not extremely high. And that doesn't necessarily change what could end up coming a little bit later for the market. On Tesla, the, the overall options flow is still in favor of like, uh, the, the call side, people actually are, are holding more calls than puts at least over the next couple of weeks when it comes to expirations. So once again, those people are getting destroyed. And the act of people in the stock market, unlike for the SPY and the QQQ, when people are holding these puts and they start closing them, right? The market makers, the institutions, they start buying shares as a hedge. When they start buying shares, the buying pressure is part of why the market is pumping the way it is. Now on Tesla's end, we're not seeing the same put to call ratio. In fact, a lot of people are actually holding calls on Tesla, which is once again, not the best of things that is causing some pain. What else concerns me about the market guys is even though we could pump tomorrow, right? Because of midterms, we could push up a little bit. The problem is tomorrow is the last full day before CPI comes out before the market opens on Thursday. And so far, if you look at the data, we're seeing core CPI on this uptrend right? Inflation is going up if you exclude uh, food and energy, which are the things the Fed does not control. But if you include them, it has been on a slight downtrend. However, energy did go up for the month of October compared to September. So it's not looking that good in my opinion. However, I don't truly know unless the data comes out. And this is the reason why CPI could cause a big reversal. It may not, but I'm just putting it out there that it's something that's a red flag. You have to be very careful. Now, Elon Musk said something very important. Now, I'm not necessarily like going to favor any party. I'm basically in the middle. Uh, but I want to be very clear about something Elon Musk mentioned. He is obviously getting political and many people may like it. They may not. I do respect his freedom of speech, however. Now, the thing about this is he is kind of like recommending people to vote for one specific party. And the thing about this is it's very telling about the current political climate. And this is not necessarily me trying to favor anyone. It has more to do with what voters end up doing based off economic circumstances. So what I mean by that is, remember, the stock market is not in the best of states, right? People are still bearish on it. They're still uncertain. On top of that, inflation is still very high. Uh, we are seeing gas prices at these crazy levels. There are global tensions. There are all these things going on. And when all these things happen, people tend to be unhappy about the economy and they are more likely to actually not vote in favor of the incumbent party or the incumbent presidential party, just for example. And this is historical. I'm not picking a side like I mentioned. If it was like the right or the left in control, the same thing will happen based off the economy. We actually saw it happen in 2020, right? A big switch happened and it's likely going to happen this time again, in my opinion. So if that's the case, 
right? The market tends to actually like uh, the other party. Once again, I'm not going to go into the full details because of what ended up happening with this whole YouTube stuff. I want to make it clear that the market could pump up off that news just temporarily, but I wouldn't necessarily get too comfortable until I truly know what CPI is and I look at more long-term trends. Because the problem with the market is if you look at the daily on SPY, look at this candle right here. This, in my opinion, spells out uncertainty. You can see like we had a big pump, big crash, big pump up again. We're just in the middle. We don't know if the market is going to crash down, if the market is going to get a big pump. Because of the fact that I do believe that one party is likely going to win the house, which is the party on the right. I don't truly know about the Senate, though. That's kind of like a coin toss. It could go either way. But if that's the case, right, if we do see the rights win both the House and the Senate, the market could pump up a little bit more from here. But like I mentioned, guys, do not become too comfortable in the pump up if that is what ends up happening, because we also have to remember CPI. That's also going to be massive. And there are some Fed officials projecting it's not going to be very good. But I'm going to get into more details about CPI later. As of right now, I told you guys what I think is likely going to happen in the elections. And so far, the sentiment that's pushing up the markets is having an opposite effect on Tesla. This thing is continuing to come down. The EV sector as a whole is essentially doing this. Some people could also argue that China is playing a big role in this too, seeing more of the lockdowns. I do believe it's playing somewhat of a of a role, but it's not as massive. I do believe the elections is also playing a big role too. And overall, guys, the trend is still looking pretty bearish. So on Tesla, I want to talk about two main possibilities. The first one is if we do get a big bounce, all right, watch this 195 level. I'm, I'm just talking hypothetically right now. I'm not pre predicting this, but I just want to make this clear. If we get a clean break above 195, we start pushing the gap fill around 197 could easily happen. And if we fill the gap up here, we could push to about 198. But I would look at this as confirmation of the downtrend because once again, it's continuing to just come down again and again. We're well below 200 at this point. And I would be looking at a big rejection to come right there and a retest of like 190 to slowly come down. Now, if you know the trend continues, right, the market pumps up tomorrow. What's been happening is the market's been pumping up over the last couple of days, and Tesla has just been coming down again and again and again. Now, if that's the case, it's very likely that Tesla could try to pump up a little bit, just like today, how we tend to see some bullish openings, but then a big sell-off, a retest of 190 is very possible, followed by a big retest of 186. And if we don't hold it this time, 180 seems very likely. A lot of people are targeting this. And there are still a lot of short sellers continuing to pile down and pile into Tesla and trying to bring this thing down. So I believe it's very likely we're going to test 180 very soon. Uh, I do believe it could happen as soon as tomorrow, but it's going to be very dependent on midterms and how Tesla responds to that. All right. It's very important to note this because sometimes we don't always know exactly what's going to happen. I don't truly know who's going to end up controlling the House and the Senate. And that's the reason why we don't truly know. This is why it's very impactful based off what the data suggests. But what I think is a little bit more likely is Tesla eventually coming down again anyways, because the trend is still looking more bearish. If Tesla gets a big pump above like 195, for example, we could fill the gap and then get a huge rejection, come all the way back down to 186. And what else is possible is we don't even push up, guys. This thing could just start dumping, dumping tomorrow if the market is super bullish. That's also very possible. But either way, I do see this thing retesting 186. If that's the case, we're likely going to end up coming down if we break below it to 180 like i mentioned earlier now 180 is a very important zone because let me try to find where it actually was on the daily i know i have to go like really back on the chart because it's been so long since this was actually this low but you guys could see all right i think like right here right here we have a demand zone right here so a lot of buyers back in like 2021 in march that's a very long time ago Tesla came crashing down, 180 came, huge bounce to 260. All right, we came all the way down again to 182. What happened to Tesla? Another big bounce, right? So historically, in this 180 zone, there have been buyers that stepped in, and there may be some buyers coming in. 
I'm not saying that Tesla is going to reverse and just explode once we touch 180, but I do believe we could get a small bounce, a tiny little one from there and maybe hold the zone for some time. I do believe it's very possible, but in case 180 doesn't even hold, right, because we have to be prepared for anything, if that doesn't even hold, guys, then I'd be watching, I think we have a gap around like that 173 zone. I believe it's around there. That's why I mapped this out. If 180 doesn't hold, that 175 to 173 zone is very possible. And like I said before, if that doesn't hold, 166 should also be watched. But anyways, guys, uh, I don't want to get too ahead of myself. For Tesla, it still looks net bearish. There's no confirmation of a big bounce. We could push up and fill this gap soon. But even if we do, guys, we need this thing to break above 200, break above 205 in order for there to be any hope for the bulls in this case. And it does not look like that's very likely. It looks more like it's either going to pump up, fill the gap, then slowly start to bleed, or this thing doesn't even go for the pump. It just starts to bleed again, breaks well below 186 and comes all the way down to 180. Seems very likely like we're going to test 180 very soon on Tesla. It's unfortunate, but please note that this is an opportunity to dollar cost average down. This doesn't mean go all in on 180. It means you could just buy some at like 190, some at 186, some at 180, some at 170 if it comes down there. And you're basically averaging down to buy more of these shares for cheap. Because remember, the long-term future is still very bright. And that was not financial advice. Anyways, thank you all for listening. Have a great rest of the day. Please know Tesla is still very bullish long-term. I'm very bullish on the things Elon Musk is working on and the whole Tesla team. Their gigafactories are amazing. Their full self-driving technology is awesome. Their AI, their humanoid robot. I'm still impressed by the company. I'm still very bullish long-term. But for the short term, there's likely going to be more pain. It's most likely going to be the case. And I do believe Tesla is going to retest 186, followed by potentially 180 if it breaks below it. Thank you for listening. Have a good one. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Tesla to the moon. Because the long-term future is bright. And peace out.